Hi, this is Mike Palmer from Mike Palmer Homes. We want to thank you for visiting our site. Just wanted to make a quick video today in front of this is a house we just completed in Denver. We're just putting the finishing touches on. But the feature I wanted to highlight today is the detached garage or spare garage behind the house. Oftentimes, people have a lot of belongings or a hobby car, etc. they want to store. And if they put it in the main garage, then they can't park the cars in there. So this is for people to actually park their cars in the garage of the main house and have this for accessories, uh, hobby car, what have you, tools and whatnot. Now this one, if you notice, the front of it looks just like the front of the house. That was required by the deed restrictions in the neighborhood. So we just mimicked the, the look on the front. You see we have the brick with the coin corners, nice carriage house lights, put the hinges on the garage, address it up a little bit in the keystone. Anyway, and on the sides, we went with a concrete fiberboard siding, otherwise known as hardy plank or hardy board on the sides painted. Anyway, let's go in and take a look. Now the design of this is fairly simple. It's basically a 24 by 24 rectangle. We'll get a view from out there. And I'll point out a few features. Obviously it's unfinished inside. A couple of things we added. We did do a utility sink, something the customer wanted. Wash hands, wash whatever. Uh, that actually does tie into their septic system. Um, we have a high voltage outlet. He wants this to run his welder, welding equipment. Um, the slab, we try to pour the slabs at the very end as late as we possibly can so that they don't take too much abuse during construction. Uh, our cinder block wall here. Um, you can build these directly on a slab. I like to build a block foundation, so it's just, to me, it's sturdier if you have things on the, on the floor. They'll, you know, they, they'll actually bang into the block as, as instead of your wall, and you don't have your, the bottom plate of your wall down right next to the dirt. Um, anyway, it's block here and brick on the outside, so the decor matches the house, just like that porch back there. Anyway, this one has its own separate electrical panel and its own electric service. Um, he is running enough electrical here where, where that's what he wanted and he thought was appropriate. If you look up at your ceiling, these are called eye joists. When we go up in the attic, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, that allows us to, to not use uh, uh, roof trusses, which is, uh, I, think, I think that product's more, de more desirable to do it this way than go with uh, traditional roof trusses. This here is a keypad we include on all our garages. Just very handy if you don't have the key, you don't have the opener, you can just put in a code. Open and close. It's on your main house. If you have the kids coming home, you know, they don't need a key. They just need to know a combination. Anyway, originally on this, uh, on this plan, the customer just wanted a scuttle hole where he could put up a ladder. He didn't want a full set of stairs. But when he went upstairs and saw the side of, size of the room, we, he opted. We, we had to modify this a little and add a set of stairs. My good friend Randy over at Hilburn Custom Homes did a fine job with the stairs, as he always does. And typically we put two fluorescent lights in a garage of this size. It usually seems to be adequate lighting as well as a light on the remote garage door opener. Anyway, up the stairs, this is our second story attic space in the garage. Uh, we put subfloor all the way from end to end to have that additional space. And that is one of the big advantages of going stick built instead of using a roof truss is you can, you have more usable space back there underneath the eave. Also, your roof rafters are 16 inches on center. Roof trusses are typically 24 inch on center and then you can have sagging in your roof sheathing. And it's also, you don't get as straight of a line. With stick built, you have this ridge here, which gives you a much cleaner line when you look down the roof. It's something you wouldn't see from the ground. Certainly, truss built garages have been around for a long time and they're a fine product. I just find this a little more desirable and it's easier on the framers. And also, what occasionally happens is when the masons are doing the foundation, occasionally something ends, two or three, ends up two or three inches over from where it should have been. It shouldn't happen, but it did. With stick built, they can just make an adjustment and move right on without, without missing a lick or, or changing anything. So it gives you more flexibility and it's just something that I'm, I'm really pleased we've gone to. Anyway, that's about it. It's a fairly simple building. 
Um, this one cost uh, just a little over $30,000, the way it sits with the brick in the second story and the sink and the welder um, as the time of this video, which is 2016. That is pretty economical. That included some extra concrete as well. Um, uh, for, you know to tie into the driveway in that budget um, depending on how you go they usually cost between 20 and 40 thousand it's always cheaper to do this when you're first building the house as to as opposed to later on afterwards because all the framers electricians and everybody's here uh, doing the house so they can, we can do it do it on a lower budget anyway but that's basically it if you have any questions please call us on the numbers below and we appreciate you visiting our site